Right, so this is a quick introduction to force multipliers, um, which we touched on in today's lesson. Uh, hopefully this will help explain what they're all about and give you a few examples. So, a force multiplier is um, a machine that multiplies force by a constant factor, a constant amount. So it's something that if you put in two newtons, okay, as your input force, the force you're putting in, you might get out 10 newtons is multiplied your force by a factor of 5. So 2 newtons in, you get 10 newtons out. Uh, if you then pushed harder and pushed 4 newtons uh, as your input force, you would then get 5 times that out, you'd get 20 newtons out. The machine multiplies your force by a constant factor. In this case, 5. Uh, it could multiply by 10. It could multiply by 1,000. Uh, this might sound a bit weird and that there's some sort of cheating afoot here uh, because you seem to be getting more out than you put in. But don't worry, we'll address that shortly. So, what are some examples of force multipliers? There are tons. You need to know about two in our GCSE, but there are many more. Uh, so, one example of a force multiplier is a hydraulic system which consists of two pistons uh, that uh, are connected together and filled up with some hydraulic fluid like oil for example um, and you will have been able to solve problems like this so if I put in, let's use a different colour, uh, if I press down on this piston here, the small piston with two newtons okay, you'll have learned that you can work out the pressure that that exerts, which is force over area, so 2 newtons over 10 centimetres squared, which gives us a pressure of 0.2 newtons per centimetre squared. You'll know that the pressure is the same throughout the whole hydraulic system, so the pressure over here, throughout all of the fluid, the pressure over here is the same. The force over here is pressure times area, which is going to be 0.2. <clears throat> excuse me, 0 0.2 newtons per centimetre squared times 50 newtons, which is 10 newtons. We have multiplied the force from 2 newtons to 10 newtons. We've multiplied the force by a factor of 5. And you'll notice that the area of the input piston and the area of the output piston are in the ratio of 1 to 5. Okay, So the ratio is 10 centimetres squared to 50 centimetres squared which simplifies to 1 to 5. So the constant factor that this system will multiply by is 5. That means, I mean I'm not going to do the calculation, but if I then put in 4 newtons, hopefully you can see that if I put in 4 newtons the pressure will double. Therefore the pressure that goes into this uh, equation will double, therefore the force will double. Okay. So if I double the input force, I double the output force, the ratio is still the same. It's always going to be a, a fixed ratio of input to output force, um, of, in this case a multiple of 5. Obviously if I changed my hydraulic setup, if I had a larger output piston, then that would change my ratio and it would change my force multiplication. I could maybe change this to a bigger one, okay, a hundred, a hundred centimetres squared. Now my hydraulic system would multiply the force by 10 because the ratio uh, of the of areas is 1 to 10. So a hydraulic system is one example of a force multiplier. Always multiplies the force by a constant amount. The other example you need to know about is uh, simple levers. So here we have um, <coughs> a very simple lever. It's just a ruler, a meter ruler, pivoted about a point here. Okay, and at one end is my hand pressing down. At the other end is a big heavy weight, something that I'm trying to hold with my finger. Um, now this to solve, uh, we would be looking at using moments to solve this. Uh, so we'd be looking at the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment. Um, now let's say I can push down with a force of. Let's say I push down with a force of I don't know 20 newtons. 
what weight could I support over here with that force of 20 newtons? Well, very quickly, anti-clockwise moment is the, my, my finger is causing an anti-clockwise moment. Uh, the moment is going to be 20 newtons times 80 centimeters, which is 2 times 8 is 16, add two zeros, newton centimeters, anti-clockwise. The clockwise moment, let's call it W, the weight of this heavy thing, is going to be W times 20 centimeters. So therefore, if these two moments are equal, the clockwise and the anti-clockwise, because this thing is, is in equilibrium, it's balanced, then 20W equals 1600. So W equals 1600 divided by 20, which looks to me like 80 newtons. So with a 20 newton force in, I can support a weight of 80 newtons uh, and actually uh, this was a, a slightly unfortunate choice of numbers because it's turned out to be the same but th there we have it you'll notice that the ratio 20 to 80 of the forces is in this case exactly the same because it's actually the same numbers as the ratio of the distances but this always holds so as before where the ratio of the areas tells you the ratio of the forces now the ratio of the distances from the pivot gives you the ratio ratio of the forces except that it's the other way around okay so before the input area to the output area gave you the input force to the output force but now you'll just notice that the ratio of the input distance from the pivot was 80 centimeters to 20 centimeters was the output distance but the force ratio is the opposite way around. I put in 20 newtons, I got 80 newtons out. So you just be aware that it, it's the other way around for, for levers. The ratio is the same, but it's flipped the other way around. So if you are eight times, <coughs> if your effort, if your input force is eight, uh, sorry, four times further away from the pivot, then your force will be four times bigger. Now this does the same force multiplication thing as the hydraulic system. If I double my input force here to 40 newtons, I'll be able to support double the weight at the other side. So the ratio of, of 1 to 4 of 4 times will still hold. So this will multi always multiply my input force by a factor of 4. Of course if I move the pivot, then my force multiplication will change. If I move the pivot now so it's over whoops sorry so it's now over here okay and now let's say we've got 10 centimeters here and 90 centimeters here now my ratio <coughs> is going to be 1 10 to 90 which is 1 to 9 so I'm 9 times further away from the pivot uh, therefore my force is going to be multiplied by a factor of 9 so my force multiplication has changed. So the, the reason they're called force multipliers <coughs> is that for a given setup, for a given pair of piston sizes, or for a given pair of distances from, from a pivot, um, the machine multiplies the force by a set amount. Um, now, if you're worried that this force multiplication is occurring and it seems like we're getting something for free, we're not. Okay, so force multipliers multiply force by a constant factor, but they divide distance by the same factor, um, which means that the product of force and distance uh, remains the same. So you may or may not remember that work done equals force times distance. Okay, work done meaning energy transferred. Well, <coughs> if we multiply the force by a factor of four it turns out we divide the distance by a factor of four meaning that uh, the the amount of work done is the same on each side the energy transferred is the same we're not getting more energy out uh, <clears throat> how does this occur oh, well, it turns out it's quite intuitive um, so if you imagine this situation here with our pistons and, and the pistons right at the top here the plunger is right at the top and we move it down a distance of let's say five centimeters that's going to displace this whole volume 
of fluid here. That whole volume of fluid here there has to go somewhere. Let's say the piston here is in this position at the moment, so it's got some space to go up. Now, when that fluid travels through the system and goes into the other piston, obviously it's going to spread out more because this piston uh, is, has got a much larger area. So the same volume of fluid is going to make that piston go up by a much smaller amount. How much is it going to go up? Well, if we really want to, we can work out the volume here. So we've displaced 50 centimetres squared of liquid here. Since liquids are impressible, we must also have displaced 50 centimetres. Sorry, did I just say squared? Cubed, my apologies. <coughs> 50 centimetres cubed of liquid there. Therefore, we must also have gained 50 centimetres cubed of uh, liquid here. Well, if the area is 50 centimetres squared, then it's only moved up by one centimeter so even though this multiplies our force by a factor of five it divides the distance it moves by a factor of five so it only moves a fifth as far so that's the trade-off you get more force but the distance is less so you have to move your input through a much greater distance than the output moves um, which conserves energy uh, the same applies to the lever I'm sure you can imagine without doing doing the calculations on this that <coughs> When you've got a lever set up like this with the pivot off centre, uh, then if you move this end of the pivot down by a certain distance, this end is going to move up by less. It's not going to move up the same distance because that end is much shorter. And indeed, as before, if this is multiplying the force by a factor of four, then the distance it moves will be divided by four. So you probably won't be asked questions on that necessarily. I mean, they could do. I haven't seen one, but it's mostly just to, to just to make you you know realize that you're not getting anything for free here. Um, energy is being conserved, and the trade-off you get from multiplying force is by losing distance travelled. Hope that's been helpful and uh, clears up what force multipliers are and uh, and how they work.